Jim Ratcliffe has reportedly made manager England manager Gareth Southgate his number one target should Eric Ten Hag leave in the summer. The Ineos billionaire is thought to be unsure whether the Dutchman is the right man to lead United in the long term. And ahead of tonight's game with Brazil on TalkSport, Southgate was asked about the links. Uh, no, it's not affecting anything. I've been in a job for eight years where almost every day things are written about me that I have to get on with. All I would say is I'm the manager of England. I've got one job, pretty big one, but we play Brazil tomorrow. We head towards the Euros in the summer. And also Manchester United have a manager. And I think when stories are written about clubs where there's a manager in place, I think that's completely disrespectful. Is it still flattering to be linked with a club like Manchester United, though? Uh, I'm not even going that route because I'm the manager of England. And if I entertain any sort of um, comment on that, then there'll be a, a another story, uh, oxygen and yeah, so no. Straight back in once again from Gareth Southgate. And joining us now for more on this is the United We Stand editor, Andy Mitten. Andy, what do you make of these Southgate links? I think they're well sourced. I think uh, the journalists who wrote them didn't just pluck them out of thin air. I think it's Ineos testing the water, seeing what the reaction is from Manchester United fans with Gareth Southgate being linked to the job. But it was probably a bad week to do it because Eric Ten Hag's stock is higher at the moment than at any point this season. United fans are absolutely buzzing off the cup win against Liverpool last weekend. And there's quite a strong pushback from Manchester United fans for the idea of Gareth Southgate mm-hmm. becoming manager, partly because it's disrespectful. There is actually a manager at Manchester United at the moment. And it's, it's, this season is still really in play. What, one of my editors at The Athletic a few weeks ago said, isn't Ten Hag dead man walking? I said, no, I honestly believe the decision has not been made. And if he was to finish in a Champions League position, if he was going to win the FA Cup, then I think the case for keeping him is is a really strong one. He's had a very difficult season, and some of that is on him, but he had a very good first season as well. And there's not a huge appetite from United fans for continually changing the manager. Uh, It hasn't worked in in recent years, but clearly if Manchester United finish seventh, it's not good enough. Mm. And that's why you'll see other managers um, linked to it. Yeah, and I said that earlier. You know, you can't keep on changing managers all the time. Um, you know, the players have got rid of too many, and, and the culture is wrong, and that what needs to be changed. In in principle, though, I think you're right. You know, we'll wait to see how Ten Hag does. We'll also wait to see how Gareth Southgate does in the Euros. If he does win the Euros, do you think obviously his stock would be higher than ever? Would that change the United fan base thinking? And and also in terms of, you're right about the timing of this coming out and testing the water. Does that then question the thought patterns and, and the timing of, of Sir Jim himself sort of putting it out there? Yeah, it does. Because it, he, there's a wave of optimism which has greeted his involvement and investment with Manchester United. But it'll start to be judged on his decisions and... I was firmly behind him coming in, but already people are saying to me, you know, he's such a big Man United fan. Why has he not been seeing Old Trafford for 40 years? And that's minor. You know, what will really matter is what he does uh, in terms of investment. He made a huge amount of encouraging noises, not just from a football perspective, but logistically redeveloping Old Trafford. I know lots of people who've met him face to face, came out of it really, really encouraged by it. But if you to, were to change Eric Ten Hag for Southgate tomorrow, that would be really, really unpopular among most Manchester United fans. We know the situations change all the time. You know, I think Gareth Southgate has done an excellent job for England. I think he's a really good person. He's a, he's a very good manager as well. But I think you've got to be fair to Eric Ten Hag. He's had so many injuries this season. There's loads of mitigating factors as well. And even when he's had full teams, his team haven't always convinced. They don't score enough goals. But he's... He's, I think he's won nine out of the last 11 games. Mm. This isn't Vince Manchester United. He's got a very clear plan of what he wants. He's just not got the personnel to fit in with that that plan. And I speak to a lot of people around the club all the time, including Ten Hag, and I'm minded to to give him a chance. I hope he succeeds this season, and I hope he gets a, a third season and, and continues um, the progress, because this season's been a, a, a bit of a, a low one so far. I mean, you mentioned the, the the investment and the redevelopment of Old Trafford. Uh, the mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, joined the breakfast show on Thursday and he had his say on the potential Wembley of the North being built to replace Old Trafford. 
Well, I think with United, for me, as Mayor of Greater Manchester, you know, we've got uh, a world-class campus on the east of our city region around the Etihad, and look at all the things that have changed there. Imagine balancing that up on the west of Greater Manchester with a new home or a refurbished home for Manchester United. For me, in my professional capacity, that is a huge opportunity for one of the biggest regeneration projects the north of England will, will see in, in the next sort of two decades. So, yeah, we're, we're working closely with, with the club. My role is in the supporting infrastructure. The funding of the stadium is for the club, but I will do whatever I can to make sure we set them up properly for the 21st uh, century. I mean, you heard Andy Burnham there. Andy, what do you make of that idea? This Wembley the North idea doesn't really resonate with me or mm. a lot of Manchester United fans. I grew up in the area close to Old Trafford. Regeneration or more regeneration, because there has been some, is important. I've been writing about expanding Old Trafford more than any journalist for 15 years. It's vital. The demand is there. Under the Glazers, the, the progress of the stadium has stalled. Other clubs have, have, have caught up. They've got better stadiums in some cases. Old Trafford's still a very, very good stadium. Mm. I'd be happy either with a, a redevelopment or with a completely new stadium. I'm just glad something's happening because for years I was getting pushback saying, no, everything's fine. And I could see with my own eyes that, that it wasn't fine. That area of Manchester, Manchester needs houses. So it's not just about football here. The local community needs to absolutely be integral to what's going on. They deserve another train station, for example. There's a train runs right past Old Trafford and the station halt for the stadium isn't even functioning anymore. So I like the grand plans. I like the idea of levelling up what Andy, Andy Burnham talks about. I've got a respect for Andy and I speak to him as well. And if we start seeing cranes on the Old Trafford skyline, fans will, will be really encouraged by this. The space there, there's not the issues that Chelsea, for example, face. There is space around Old Trafford, partly because in the 90s, Martin Edwards, who was the chairman, sanctioned the, the purchase of a lot of land for what looks like absolute peanuts now. There's Metrolink stations, there's dual carriageways, there's a Bridgewater Canal, the Manchester Ship Canal. It's a desirable area. Mm. If they can renovate rather than rebuild, though, uh, how important do you feel that is, that this sort of iconic Old Trafford of the past it is kept going? Or is it is it purely about trying to get the right stadium? And if that means building a new one, then so be it. For, for all along, I've been about re redeveloping, expanding the main stand, getting the capacity from 74, get it over 90. Yeah. The issue was always the railway behind it. But there are other imperfect parts of Old Trafford. The, the leg room's too tight. The roof's horrible. But in the last couple of years, and, and I'm a stadium freak, I, I go around the world looking at stadiums. I can bore you to death talking about stadiums. <laughs> I've started to be more at ease with the idea of, of a completely new one. I'd be happy with either. Because for too long, nothing has happened or there's been a fresh lick of paint or a new lift shaft or whatever. And the demand is vast, even though this isn't a great United side. Manchester United is one of the three biggest football clubs in the world. Why not have a 100,000 capacity stadium there? Why not encourage more of the local kids in Manchester? Because when I used to get the bus to the ground from Urmston and Stratford, it was full of local kids. And that bus is now empty. And that's really sad to me. And... Getting tickets is quite difficult. And I know United are international. I'm proud of the global support, but a bigger capacity makes it possible to make let more fans into the stadium. So overall, I'm optimistic about the whole thing. If it's redevelopment, fine. If it's a completely new stadium. I saw what Tottenham did. I saw what Athletic Bilbao did when they, they built right behind their existing ground. I've seen what Barcelona are doing with Camp now. Real Madrid, for me, was always the best stadium in the world anyway. And now it's even better. And I've been been to both versions of it. So bring it on. Brilliant. Andy, got to let you go. Brilliant stuff. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Cheers, pal. That's Andy Mitt and the United We Stand editor. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.